and I think I'm gonna have to do the real deal by playing the infamous opening invented by Magnus Carlsen, which begins with c3, queen a4, queen h4. There we go, guys. Now this has been completed. Uh, any time control you want, abject pawn, any time control you want. Yeah, there we go. This was the challenge to play f3, and I think not only did I play f3, I also played uh, <laughs> uh, the real deal by swinging my queen over and uh, doing some kind of strange castle. Alright, what to play next? That's the real question. Let's go e4. Yeah, I think e4 opens up the position a bit too much, so maybe it wasn't a good move. And I should have opted for g3 or something instead. I don't know. Let's go knight f3 next. I have the central majority if you want to be optimistic, guys. Look, the d and the e pawn, as opposed to only one pawn here. Let's go b3 with the idea of bishop b2 next, I suppose. I was curious how long you stream for on average. I need to, okay, so on average, I think uh, one of my streams lasts, uh, if I was to guess, uh, like three hours, maybe slightly less. Something like two hours, 45 minutes is the average duration of a stream, I would guess. But it really depends. At times, some streams last a bit longer than others. Let's go king c2, intending to go bishop b2 next. Yeah, let's take on b3, guys. Let's take on b3. Take on a1 next, perhaps. Yeah, this is somewhat annoying of a move, actually. Yeah, this is very annoying. Very good move from my opponent. Gonna have to play the very weakening move c4 here, unfortunately. At least I'm threatening a pawn on e5 now, so I have, uh, I have at least one intention. Yeah, I think c4 saves me there. If I wouldn't have had the move c4, I could have considered resigning. Fortunately, I have the move c4, however. And how many subs do I have? I have five people are currently subscribed to this channel, and uh, I would love to increase this number. But, uh, it's not too big of a deal. Okay, my opponent might want to go knight b4 next, I'm not certain. Let's just go d3 here. I can go bishop c3 as well as knight c3. I don't know which of these moves are better, to be honest. Knight c3, there is knight d4 though, so that's a bit annoying. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play bishop c3, but now I'm terribly, terribly weak on the dark squares. Very weak on the dark squares. Let's take with the knight. So I'm clearly worse here, of course, but uh, what do you expect after playing such a strange opening? He has knight here as well. Yeah, that's an annoying move. Yeah, let's give up a pawn. I might be able to take on e5 in the end, however. Yeah, let's take here and then take on e5. It's equal in pawns, but I'm clearly worse here due to a slightly worse pawn structure and less active pieces. Though suddenly this position is not so bad anymore. It's playable at least. While I'm clearly not better, it's not that much to complain about actually. I'm gonna try knight f3 here I suppose. I think if my opponent goes rook a8, I'll go for queen d2 or something and just not care all that much. Okay, my opponent goes here, which is uh, somewhat strange. Intuitively, this isn't the best move. I have the option of going knight d5 if I want, which is uh, a very ambitious move. But let's try it. I think it's, uh, it's a good move. Potentially, it just improves my pawn structure, actually. Yeah, now I've got a very nice pawn structure, so I think now I can finally confidently say that I'm marginally better. Slight advantage now. Let's go queen d2 next, intending to go rook e1 or rook a1, depending on the situation. 
I guess I'll go rook e1. Usually it's in uh, the queens cooperate better with the knight and the queen cooperates with the bishop. Uh, let's pre move queen takes e1 in this position. Um, let's see what, what will my opponent do next. I'm not so sure. Yeah, now I can win a pawn or can I? That's the question. Can I win a pawn now or not? Not sure if I can actually. Oh wait, I have a genius trick. I think my opponent might fall for it, so I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, I will take on f7 next after my opponent goes king h7. And now watch out, guys. I have something really, really smart coming up. I think you're gonna be mind blown if my opponent allows this. I have a very smart trick coming up. Not gonna say it in case my opponent is watching this stream. But they have some smart stuff coming up, that's for sure. Yes, my opponent did fall for my trick indeed. This is what I was talking about, guys. Let's go. This is the trick I had foreshadowed. How on earth could I know that this would happen? I just knew that my opponent would fall for this trick, guys. Now I'm winning his queen and he's dead lost and can resign. Yeah, there we go. This is what I wanted, guys. As quickly as I saw, actually here, I saw this option, yeah? That uh, after he goes h6, I can win a pawn. As here, uh, yeah, bishop g6 fails uh, to knight g5. I, I just knew that my opponent would go for this somehow. Already after h6, queen e8, I knew this would happen. Sometimes I'm so magical, I can predict the future, guys. Alright, let's analyze this game very briefly, because I think it's very instructive how uh, my opening, I think, is a very instructive opening, which you can use to destroy all your opponents. Anyways, f3, a very good move, taking control over the center. C3, very good move, taking more control over the center. And queen a4, very good move, uh, developing the queen early on in the game. And knight c6, and my opponent gets a piece out, fair enough. And now uh, I realize that the queen is better placed on h4, of course. My opponent takes the center, and here this idea is not complete without going king d1, of course. Um, now the king has a very nice shelter square on c2, which I will hope to use. And now my queen is well defended on e1. Uh, this is the best chess opening ever, and I recommend everyone to try it to win all your chess games. Alright, I hope you, uh, you understood I was sarcastic there. Yeah, bishop d6, e4 striking in the center. My opponent captured when queen d7. I decided to get the knight out. Here I decided to go b3 with the idea of bishop e2. So I got my bishop out right, and this is already pretty bad. But it's soon gonna change, and wow, I didn't realize bishop takes b3 would have won the game. Why does it win the game? Ah, now I see why it wins the game. But this is very hard to see. I just get slaughtered on the light squares. I guess I could show the variation for you guys, why not? Captures, captures, Zagad Matter likes to say uh, here. A queen a4, threatening queen b3, and it's not very easy to defend against this threat actually. And here knight b3 just traps uh, the bishop. It's not so clear to see though, but uh, I can definitely ensure you that white's king is not ideally placed. Anyways, this is also very good. Here c4 is the only move not losing the game, and knight takes b3, surprise, not so surprisingly works actually. And okay, after knight c6, I have a somewhat normal position already. Even though I'm still clearly worse, but I'm not dead lost. Yeah, now I'm suddenly only a little bit worse. Here he needs to go rook e8, of course, because after queen b6, knight d5, I might not even be worse at all. Ah, uh, he had bishop takes d5 followed by rook e8, yeah. But now I felt as if I had a decent position, actually. Yeah, now I can, now I can consider my position playable, at least. Yeah, and somehow... Here after queen f7, I'm actually, I think, better. Though my opponent had a perpetual here, but I just knew that he would fall for a trick with bishop g6. And then he can resign after knight g5. Alright, I hope you enjoyed.